Hello everyone and welcome back to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. Uh, I'm coming to you from the Pacific Northwest, the greater Seattle region of Washington State, uh, where I live and I work and I play. So this is my October Makes video, which is coming to you a bit later than I was hoping. Uh, <laughs> first of all, the weekend of Halloween was just busy. So I was going to record it then, but I thought I was so close to finishing one of the objects that I thought, okay, I'll, I'll record it the weekend after October actually ends so I can have one more FO to show you and so last weekend recording didn't happen because we lost our power at the house and I did not want to use up my phone battery recording videos because I had no idea how long we were going to be without power at the house and so all right it's November 13th November is halfway over and I'm finally getting around to recording my October makes video. Before we get too far into the episode, I should tell you what I'm wearing because I am wearing some hand mitts today from head to toe. <laughs> um, so on my head is a hat that I knit for Michael, but I'm wearing it today because it matches my outfit. Um, <laughs> and this is just out of some acrylic yarn in black and gray and this is a color work chart that I made up and I knit myself a pair of socks out of this and I never finished weaving in the ends and they're still sitting here in the craft room and that was like four years ago yeah <laughs> anyway it's my um like waterfall pattern because I feel like it looks like water coming down a waterfall and kind of dripping over rocks and anyway um, yeah, so it's just, it's black and gray, and like I said, matches my outfit, because I'm wearing my So Faded sweater, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry, and I knit this out of blacks and grays, and so I faded from black at the top into a really pale gray, and this is all yarn from Knit Picks. It is a superwash um, wool, I think it's a wool nylon blend, um, but I do actually wash this in the washing machine, and the only reason I do that is because I know it's super wash wool in here, and it'll be, it has been fine, although it is, this sweater is also like four years old, and I definitely have pilling going on, especially in the armpit area. Um, I picked a big one off this morning and thought, oh my gosh, someone is going to see that and wonder what the heck is going on. Um, but yeah, I need, I do not own a gleaner to help trim that off, but uh, I am now seeing why that tool exists and why people have it. Uh, but I love this sweater. It's very loose and comfortable, and it's black and gray, so it matches a lot of my wardrobe. Um, and then I'm also wearing some hand-knit socks, and I think I'll, instead of lifting my feet up to the camera, I'll move the camera down to my feet. Um, yeah, so you can see my tripod there, too. <laughs> These are some shorty socks. Um... What yarn is this? This is from, oh my gosh, I can like picture the label. Oh gosh, Desert Vista Dye Works. Um, right? I believe these this yarn was from Desert Dis Vista Dye Works. Wow, what a memory game. Anyway, it's gray with like pink and pops of lime green and um, they pretty much go with everything in my wardrobe, <laughs> so I wear these socks a lot. 
also had someone ask at one point about my nail polish and I'm sorry I'm so late to commenting on that um, but I am trying to have good habits about um, my hygiene including painting my nails um, my nails if they get too long and by too long I mean have pretty much any length at all to them um, are really flimsy and they're easy to chip and break and it's very it's very annoying <laughs> because I end up having fingernails of all different lengths because this one broke one day ago and that one broke three days ago and um, yeah so what I've been doing is painting my nails with gel nail polish and it strengthens them so they are much harder to break, dang near impossible to break. Um, and I can actually use my nails to like open up packages and I don't feel like I'm going to accidentally tear my nail off. <laughs> it's not that bad. I'm, I'm over exaggerating, but, um, but yeah, so I have been doing that a lot. It's quite the process and makes me really appreciate folks who um, paint nails for a living because it's a chore that takes up a whole evening to do my nails. Um, but if you're curious about the nail polish that I use, it is a gel polish so it does use a UV lamp to cure. Which is another thing I really like about these because I do not have to sit and wait and wave my hands around for the nail polish to dry. I just put it under the lamp for 60 seconds and it's dry. Uh, but I've really been enjoying the Beatles um, gel polish. And this is, the, this is the first set I got. I've tried a couple of other brands, but this one's my favorite. So I'm, I'm not going to mention the others because they're good, but they're not as good. I, I really like the Beatles. So I kept this in the box because the set came packed in foam. And so the polish is all in here and sorted and it's in this one box. So when I'm doing my nails, which I do while we're sitting down watching TV, I just pop up a TV tray and I basically set up my manicure set and I do a manicure while we watch TV. Um, but they've got, this is another reason, this is not all gel nail polish or nail polish comes with a freaking color sticker on the top of it to help you identify the color right and these all do in fact this this color is a 70 right but they all have stickers on top and some of them are glitter and some of them are solid and also not only do you get the base coat but you have two different options for the top coat you can either have it be shiny which is what I have right now is what you usually see but there's also a matte finish that comes in these sets and I tried it once and I thought it looked really cool anyway so there's oh my gosh that's gonna tip over hang on but there's three of these foam things in this in this one set um, to get me started on doing this whole gel manicure thing myself was $35, which is actually cheaper than getting one manicure at a salon. So I figured if I paint my nails more than once with this stuff, it's, it's paid for itself. So <laughs> that's fine. Um, but this is, this is the first set. Um, yeah, it has 20 colors in it. Um, does it say like which set this is? No. Because they have, they have multiple sets that are offered. In fact, I bought another one when there was a, a sale on Amazon is where I buy these. And it, the picture looked like a box just like this, but it had different colors than what I have now. But it didn't come like this. It came in a in a in a cube shaped box, 
and all the polish is in this little holder it's got spaces for the polish and it's like super organized it says beetles on it and again they have color stickers on the top <laughs> which doesn't seem like a lot to ask but I have a couple sets of gel polish that don't have color stickers on top and all the bottles look identical and so what I had to do was figure out my own way of being able to paint on a sticker and put the sticker on the top so I had to basically buy my own stickers to do that but then the color that shows up on a sticker versus the color that shows up on your nail isn't always the same anyway so it, it's a big plus but again it came with the same base coat shiny top coat matte top coat so it's all in there so I'm wearing um, 806 it's like this mauve pink it's basically mauve and then I also put glitter on my my ring ring finger so that's 805 I really like it. The only thing I don't like about the gel polish is how hard it is to get the polish off when I'm ready to redo my nails. But honestly, that's really a mark in its favor because I wanted polish that was hard to get off my nails because I garden, I'm knitting, I'm you know getting my hands dirty and using my hands a lot and so um yeah it stays on it 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 barely ever comes off and if it comes off it's because i didn't do a good job putting the layers on um but yeah in case you're curious about my nail polish because i had someone ask um i really like it i'm super impressed with it um i would recommend it and that's why i was willing to talk about it here in the podcast so I'm going to start with knitting and finish with, well, let's do this in order because I don't have just two topics. I'm going to start with knitting, then talk about some spinning and then some acquisitions, some new things I've brought into my sash or my tool set or whatever, um, here into the craft room, things entering the craft room. <laughs> So I guess first things leaving the craft room are a couple of finished objects. I finished knitting two pairs of socks. And so the first pair is a pair of shorties, which are easy to get done quickly. Um, these are socks for myself. And uh, what I did is I like to knit mine cuff down. So I started here and I worked just one by one ribbing for I think it was 15 rounds. I worked my new favorite heel now, which is a heel flap um, that's the Eye of Partridge pattern, but it has garter stitch on the edge, which actually makes it a little bit easier for me to come back and pick up stitches for the gusset. Um, and so I just continued the one by one ribbing down the top of the foot and uh, worked a rounded toe and you can see the yarn is self-striping this is yarn from hobby h-o-b-b-i-i -I. and so it's one of the moonwalk um yarns so very much look like michael jackson feet to me right doing the moonwalk um <laughs> But this is 74% uh, wool, 24% polyamide, and 2% polyester. They are sparkle. I don't know if you can see that all too well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they sparkle. Um, and because I made a pair of shorty socks, I have a lot left. <laughs> and I have another ball of this yarn in a slightly different colorway. On the shelf so I can easily get uh, a couple of pairs of socks out of this this is um, 100 grams I weighed it and it was 97 grams 
So, um, yeah, I should have enough to do another pair of socks. Um, yeah, so I finished those. I didn't really make many posts about it, like, on Instagram or anything. I don't know why. I just... They were my mindless sit down and knit um, kind of socks, and I just didn't pause to take pictures. I just knit. So they got done very quickly, which was nice. <laughs> so the second finished object for October is another pair of socks. <laughs> these are for Michael. And so these are knit out of Patton's Croy in the... 70s stripes colorway. It is a measure. That is the correct decade. Yes, 70s stripes. Um, so I had purchased a a big bundle of Pratt & Scroy sock yarn earlier this year. Um, oh, that's right. That was when Mike and I had car trouble. <laughs> Not car trouble, but trouble getting the car worked on. Um, and we walked over to Hobby Lobby and they had... <laughs> Uh, Patton's Croy marked at a discount. Um, not all the colors, select colors, right? Um, for $1.99. So I just went whoosh and put them all in the cart. And that's right, we walked to Hobby Lobby, so whatever you buy, you have to carry. So thank you, Michael, for carrying everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, so these are 70 stripes. And October, fall time, all the reds and orange with the blue contrast. I mean, it was just calling my name. Um, I made Michael pick out the color for his heel. I gave him three choices and had him pick, and he went with this gray. So this is also Patton's Croy in the gray marl colorway. So, um, so it goes really nicely when you use the same brand of yarn. Um, it's just completely seamless, except for the color. Uh, I'm doing two by two ribbing all the way around, down the top of the foot. Um, it looks like that is Michael's favorite kind of sock, so I'm just going to make a bunch that are just two by two rib all the way. Um, this is my new favorite heel flap, so <laughs> it's an uh, Eye of Partridge um, pattern here. And then a garter stitch edge on it. And it does make it really easy to pick up those stitches um, along that edge. And a rounded toe. And I decided to not have a contrast toe, just go down with the stripes all the way. It, um, I wanted to do the stripes in the opposite order. Uh, but they do not go in the opposite order. <laughs> but they are um, off-center. Right? So I'm looking at that dark blue. If I can line these up. So dark blue, dark blue, dark blue, dark blue. So they are off-center from each other. So they're not a perfectly matching pair. But, yeah, I thought that was cool. Um, and so I went, I went with that and it's a good thing I did not decide to like wind off color to, to match them up or anything because out of the two balls of yarn, this is all I have left. Yeah. <laughs> so I pretty much got as much as I could out of this. Um, now, had I done the toes in a contrast color, I could have knit these taller, but I think this is a good length. So that works out. And I only have the t a little bit left. That's great. Um, yeah, so two pairs of socks are finished in the month of October. So I did also cast on something new that's still a work in progress. And that something I cast on is some hand-spun yarn that I spun in October. And since I've already cast on the project, and it's like a project where I have to keep the, yor the yarn organized, excuse me, or I lose track of which one was which, um, I'm going to put in pictures. <laughs> so... 
I was sent some fiber from Wild Wool Farm um, to do a review and so I have a video up on the channel where I take you through um, spinning this fiber into yarn and so I'll put a link in here to that video please go check it out it's super fun um, and Wild Wool Farm um, has just beautiful products um, to offer and if they don't have something you're looking for you can always ask um, I think that's how they've ex I'm guessing that's how they've expanded some of their offerings is that oh it seems like people are interested in this someone asks let's see if others are interested um, and so they're a growing business lots of possibilities so um, the fiber is very fall oriented in its color scheme in my opinion with the reds and oranges and yellows it just makes me think of the trees the leaves on the trees changing colors um, I grew up in Michigan and going on a fall color tour was a thing we did we got in the car and we drove around and we just appreciated how beautiful the entire scenery was with these bright vibrant colors on the trees um, and so it just made me think fall time um, so I spun up all of these bundles into skeins 12 in total and so what I decided to do was assign each color a number so I have them numbered 1 through 12 which is why I'm not picking them up to show you on camera because I have them organized um, as numbered 1 through 12 and um, I do not have the number attached to the ball of yarn no the ball of yarn is sitting on a paper with the number I know um, but I've uh, what I'm doing is rolling a 12 sided die to randomly choose what's the next color I join in so I'm knitting a shawl I'm knitting it in the round with a steak that I will cut open later and I'm doing just a really basic color work with um, two strands of yarn at a time and then when I I'm gonna switch out one color for another I roll the die to figure out what's the new color and so I wanted it to have that randomness in it kind of like the trees with the with the colors it just without me following a set pattern I wanted it to have a more natural random feel to it so I'm rolling a die and it's super fun um, so let me grab the shawl Currently, this is how this project is living. <laughs> I'm so afraid to put this in a bag. Um, so it's just living in this tray. I've got a notebook here where I'm, I'm keeping notes and track of things. But basically, I've got this. Um, it looks like a dice tray to me. That's what I use it for. I got it at... Joanne's the sticker still on here <laughs> it's like a decoration but it says happy camper and so um, here's my 12 sided die and so I roll the die in this die tray dice tray right to decide the next color um, and then uh, but to transport this around I just put it in the dice tray and I just carry it around it's kind of funny um, Let's see. Oh, this one isn't attached yet. This is color number. This is why I gotta have notes. This is color number eight. This is about to get attached. And this is color number two. And it is attached. It's gonna stay. But basically. Do do do. Hang on. There are enough stitches for me to actually be knitting in the round now instead of magic loop style. So at first, so here's the cast on. And the first number I rolled was a five, which is this bright yellow. Um, and I thought that was very appropriate because yellow is my favorite color. <laughs> Um, and so I've been working on the same needle this whole time. So at first it was um, Magic Loop. 
style, but now that I have enough stitches, it fills up the cable, so I'm just going around. Um, yes, there are all these ends. No, I'm not weaving them in. Now, at first, this first bit, I did weave them in because I realized um, I should have just put the ends in the spot where I'm going to be cutting the steak. So that's what I did. I moved them. So they're going to be, they're right there in the part where I will go back later and cut with my scissors. And so uh, these will all be reinforced with crochet over here. So there should be no need to weave in these ends. So they're just hanging out right now as fringe. But you can see um, the color progression. Uh, what's funny is that in the beginning, I was always changing colors. And I went through all of them. At first it was a lot of the colored ones, so red, orange, and yellow. And then we got more into the neutrals. Here's a section where I kept rolling, I think it was 11, three times in a row. Yep. Nope. 10. Number 10, three times in a row. Right there. Um, and there's another section where... Oh yeah, there's one down here. Where is it? Oh, right here. It kept going back and forth between the same two numbers. So it's just this big section. These are the same two colors in here. Um, where is that in my, I'm looking at my notes here. Of I've written down all the numbers I've rolled. Oh yeah, it went 10, 2, 11, 2, 11, 11, 4, 2. <laughs> And 10 and 11 are really similar in color. So this is where I'm at with my um, dice rolling. So I roll the number to figure out what I'm putting on next. So you can see I'm going to be working with 2 and 8. And then after I finish my color progression, I'll put a check on 2 because 2 will be finished. But before I cut 2, I will roll the die because if I roll a 2... It's already connected and I can just pick up with it. <laughs> yeah. So it's been really fun. Um, and another motivation for wanting to do this project is that um, with the randomness is that um, I teach math for a living and uh, I teach these days a lot of statistics and one of the concepts that I really want to make sure students understand is the idea of randomness. Uh, and so I thought, depending on how this turns out, uh, this could be a good example to bring to class to show them randomness, right? Is that I didn't set a pattern and just continue to follow it. And there are blocks sometimes where it's just like, boom, a whole bunch of gray. Because I roll three tens in a, roll, in a row and sometimes that happens. And that's just a reality of randomness. Um, and so I'm really uh, having a lot of fun with this project. Um, this here is the center of the shawl um, so it's getting that beautiful V shape and so when I cut this open these um, two edges are the ones that go straight out um, and so they'll go along my wingspan so you can see right now it's only out to uh, just past my elbow and it is very difficult to gauge size okay I did not drop any stitches um, it is difficult to gauge the size when knitting this in the round but I'm super excited about um, 
cutting that steak open. So I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, it'll be nice to have a shawl that's like woolly wool and not super wash or something with nylon blended throughout. So this will definitely be something that needs to be hand washed, not thrown in the washing machine. Um, but yeah, like I said, my hope is that this project will kind of have um, multiple purposes, multiple functions, possibly something I bring into class to just give an example of choosing things randomly. And beautiful and warm and cozy and awesome. <laughs> So in the month of October, I spun about 960 yards of two-ply yarn. There's the box for my nail polish. Hang on. I knew I saved it to show you. I didn't know where I put it. Here's the box that that little cube came in. Okay, gel nail polish. Modern Muse CL136. Yeah. What was I saying? <laughs> um, yeah, so I added 960 yards to my stash and I'm immediately knitting it up to get it out. So that's great. Um, I also added, brought into the craft room, a new spindle. So I don't know why, but I am just like really wanting to learn how to support spindle. Uh, honestly, I think it's all these pictures I've been seeing on Instagram of these gorgeous spindles loaded up with yarn. Um, but yeah, so I went on Etsy and so I brought into the craft room a support spindle. So this is from Yarn Spindles and this is a, I'm just, I've got my receipt here from Etsy. Uh, it is dyed. So it is wood and it's dyed, like painted. It's beautiful. Uh, it's blues and purples. And it goes up here as well, but of course I've covered it with yarn. But basically it comes up here as well uh, with a similar pattern as this. And <laughs> it's so pretty. Uh, so this is natural tip. So there's no like metal in there. It's just the wood on the tip. Supported spindle, dyed apple and sugar maple. Yep. Uh, and it weighs 22 grams. So uh, I'm trying this out. I first started using some of my Carrie Hill fiber that I have already cleaned and combed up. I was really struggling. Honestly, when I was spinning the Carry Hill on my spinning wheel, I was also struggling to draft. So the fact that I was still struggling with it while trying to learn a new spindling technique makes sense. Uh, but then I swapped to some Shetland I have sitting out and that went a lot better. <laughs> it was a lot easier. Um, so I think part of my problem has been in the fiber that I'm choosing to spin. Um, I've been watching a few videos. Also, some of my struggle has been the fiber prep. It's not been very conducive to this kind of spinning. So I'm trying out some new things. Uh, but yeah, so I have a new support spindle in the stash. Um, and it's been fun to try to figure out how this works. I also brought in some more materials, not that much. <laughs> I'm trying to curb my spending. I really want to focus on stashing down, not stashing up at the moment, 
but I couldn't resist this sale. Um, I brought in some, uh, it's, it's basically roving, right? This, I would not consider this yarn. It's just fiber that's slightly spun together. It's very separatable, separable. So I got, I picked this up at Joann's. So this is a premium yarn KC knit and crochet. And it says product, the product name is Cozy. It's 50% superwash wool, 50% acrylic. So the fact that this actually has some wool in it, in fact, half of it is wool and it's super washable. My brain immediately went to, I could spin this down into sock yarn. So that's why I bought it. <laughs> um, this one, the color is called Evergreen, which is super appropriate and I love it. Uh, and I got a second one, and this one, the colorway is emerald, and I think it looks teal, honestly. I love them both so much. So I brought them home, and, and I told Michael, okay, the plan, the plan is to spin these down into sock yarn and knit socks out of them. And then I asked him, if you had to pick a color, which one would you pick? And he picked this one. But when I was in the store, I was thinking this one. <laughs> and I got this one for me. <laughs> but I love them both. So we'll see what I do with them. Um, I'm thinking that I'd really like to have a solid color. So I'm not thinking of like blending these. Maybe I could do like a little bit so that I could get like specks of color, but not like striping or anything. But yeah, so we shall see. But this was, um, this was a good deal. It was on sale. And if I broke it down into thinking about, so this is how much, how much is this? Uh, where is this information? Aha, this is 200 grams. Ideally, if I could actually spin a nice fingering weight yarn out of this, would be um, two pairs of socks right here. Like full size socks. Um, and for how much did this cost me on sale? Like $7? That's not bad. So we'll see. But that's the plan. Is that's, uh, that's fiber to spin. So last time I asked you to comment on the September makes video for a chance to win a project bag that was Thanksgiving themed. And so now I'm going to announce the winner of this bag. And that winner, winner, winder, mm -hmm. that winner is Linda E. <laughs> so Linda, you are the winner of this project bag. Yay! Congratulations. Um, all you have to do is send me a message on Ravelry or Instagram and let me know your address so that I can send this to you. And um, my contact information is down below in the description box. I have a link tree link so you can easily find me and my accounts on the various social media things. Um, but Linda, please send me a private message to let me know your address. Linda E, to clarify, there are a couple of Lindas out there. <laughs> um, and I'm going to send you this project bag. So... Um, for the last giveaway of the year, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, 2022 is, 
coming to an end here pretty soon. That's a shock every year, isn't it? Um, but yeah, for the last giveaway of the year, so by commenting on this video right here, the November Makes video, um, you will be entering to win a um, pattern prize sent to you virtually through Ravelry. <laughs> um, so end of the year shipping. Um, wh what's the word I want to use to describe it? Stressful? <laughs> <laughs> delayed, um, potentially lost. So uh, I figure it would probably be a lot less um, stress and annoyance if we just do a virtual giveaway for the last one, so a pattern prize. Um, and then that way, uh, any prize you win or package won't get hung up in the mail with uh, lots of holiday sending that usually goes on. Um, also, I I'm aware that porch pirates are a thing, uh, and some folks tend to lose items this uh, upcoming time of year when everyone's expecting packages to be coming. So just to eliminate that need to, you know, stay home and make sure someone doesn't steal a package or, you know, be on the lookout for something that's potentially lost. Um, I'm just going to do a virtual giveaway instead. So if you are the winner, randomly selected from the comments below, uh, then I will purchase a pattern off of Ravelry to gift to you. Um, and that's up to a $10 US dollar value. So $10 or less. I will buy it for you as a prize. And I thank you for being a viewer of the podcast and commenting on episodes. So yeah, all you have to do to enter to win is leave a comment down below. Um, it can be a short comment, it can be a long comment, <laughs> whatever, just say hi. Um, and you know, anyone in the world is eligible to win this prize. So you can be located anywhere, which is also another really nice thing. <laughs> about the virtual giveaways. It does make um, those worldwide connections easier than sending a physical item. Although I really love physical items. I mean, hello. <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> so that is all I have for this episode. Um, I have Christmas making underway. It is that time to get started. So I have started crafting some gifts for Christmas. Um, and I'm not gonna share those until the next episode. <laughs> uh, but I do have some things. I'm really hoping to finish this random shawl. Um, but we'll see how that goes amidst gift making. Because I want to prioritize the making of the gifts because the sooner I can get them in the mail, as we have said, the better. <laughs> so I really need to move all the all of that to the top of the queue and push the shawl down to the bottom. Um, once I get those gifts put in the mail, then I can go back to picking up my shawl. Which is sad. I don't want to put it on the back burner because it's so fun to work on. But this is this is the reality of wanting to make gifts for Christmas, and I hadn't I haven't done that yet. So <laughs> something's got to give, and the shawl the shawl can wait, and I can I can work on these things for now. Um, other plans because Advent season is upon us. Very soon it will be starting. Um, I do not have an advent calendar, uh, but I do plan on participating in, I really hope she's doing it again this year, I have no idea, uh, but Imagine Landscapes, the past couple of years I've done the gnome knit along for advent. And I just think it's so fun to have a surprise of what kind of gnome we're making. 
it's a low stakes project that that can be a mystery it's not a huge investment of yarn um and and has that surprise factor to it and so uh, i really hope she's doing another one this year because if she is i'm doing it and that will be my one advent thing that i do this year so i do have plans for that if you're doing an advent calendar you've probably already ordered it and received it or are going to receive it soon i know yarn dyers have to ship that stuff out in time for you to have it for december 1st to get started i'm excited <laughs> i'm excited to see all the pictures um and posts and videos about what folks are doing to celebrate the holidays so yeah until next time i hope you stay safe stay healthy and you enjoy your crafts whatever they may be until next time folks take care bye <laughs>